welcome back to my channel, unless of course you're new here, in which case, hi, hello, my name is Ashley and welcome to my random little corner of the internet. Today we're going to be doing that do I have that book tag. Basically what you're supposed to do is set a timer, check your bookshelves, look at these questions, find a book that fits with those, see how fast you can do it, see how well you know your books. I have one bookshelf, I didn't set a timer, I just looked. Um, <laughs> so, I uh, don't know, no, shame on me. Um, and so I have all the books here scattered around me. I'm going to go through the questions and show you what these books are. Um, and if I've read them, I'm going to tell you about them. But there are quite a few that I actually haven't read yet, which really sucks. But, you know, hey. So question number one is, a: do you have a book with deckled edges? And I do have a couple, but I went with this one first for this one. Um, it's called Miss Treadway and the Field of Stars by Miranda Emerson. Um, I have not read this one. All I know is that there is a girl who is on the... Uh, lives on the West End in New York during the 60s and some at some point she goes missing but here is my deckled edges basically just means that they're all uneven and more archival looking it's pretty cool I am excited to read this one it's a little out of my comfort zone as far as genres go um, but I found it at the Dollar Tree for a dollar don't don't skip over the book section at your Dollar Tree like they do have some pretty good books um, so yeah so it's to answer question number one, Deckled Edges, Miss Treadway, and The Field of Stars by Miranda Emerson. The second book, or the second question is three or more people on the cover. I looked, and surprisingly, most of them have one or maybe two, but my copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire do have one, two, three, four, or four Hogwarts, or Ho Hogwarts, four <laughs> Triwizard Champions. Everybody knows what Ho Harry Potter is, mostly. Goblet of Fire, Harry... Um, does not put his name in the Goblet of Fire, somebody else does, and he ends up being tri picked as the second champion for Hogwarts and has to go through these three very dangerous tasks, and in the end, spoiler alert for a book that came out uh, 15 years ago, Voldemort comes back. So, here's our more than three or more people on the cover. Question number three, do you have a book that is based on another story? I have... Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. Dorothy Must Die and the other books in this series are basically, you know, everything went well, everything is great in Oz when Dorothy leaves, but then Dorothy comes back and decides she wants to rule Oz, and she is not a very nice person. And chaos ensues, and the other people, there are people that have to come in, and there's a girl that says, yeah, it says, my name is Amy Gum, and I'm the other girl from Kansas, and I've been recruited by the Revolutionary Order of the Wicked, and I've been given a mission. So basically, she has to kill Dorothy, She and she has to take away the things that were given to Dorothy's crew in order to bring back um, balance to Oz, and bring it back to what it was even before the Wicked Witch. The next one is, do you have a book that has ten, that, uh, the title of the book is ten letters or longer? I really thought this was going to be hard, because then I turn around and look at my bookshelf in the first book. Only has one word. Incarceron. I have not read this one yet. Um, it was one of my husband's books that I found in storage when we went through a crate of old books. Bas I mean, it sounds really cool. It, it says something about, it says a prison is alive, is the tagline. But it says... Finn cannot remember his childhood, he cannot remember his life before Incarceron. Uh, a prison that has been sealed for centuries, where inmates live in cells, dilapidated cities, and unbounded wilderness. No one has ever escaped, but then he finds a crystal key and a girl named Claudia. Claudia's father is the warden of Incarceron, and Claudia is about to become a prisoner herself, doomed to an arranged marriage. If she helps Finn in his escape, she'll need his help in return. But they don't realize that there is more to Incarceron than meets the eye. Escape will take their greatest courage and cost far more than they know, because Incarceron is alive. I mean, and it sounds pretty cool. So I'm gonna, and there's a sequel to it called Safik? Like Sapphire, but Safik? But anyways, there's ten letters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten. Alrighty. The next question is, do you have a book that starts and ends with the same letter? I have one, and I got real lucky because I just bought this last week for my husband for our anniversary, and that is Ahsoka. Um, yeah, it could be argued that it's called Star Wars Ahsoka, but it's not. It's just called Ahsoka. So it begins and ends with the letter A. It's by E.K. Johnston, and it clearly is a book about Ahsoka Tana, the Jedi who's no longer actually a Jedi. Um, I'm not entirely certain when this book takes place, 
it appear trying to read i would assume it's after obviously she has left the jedi order it is sometime taking place sometime after the clone wars but before rebels start so i know the battle of mandalore is also in it oh i dropped my book um so he's pretty far into it if you can see his bookmark and maybe i'll read it after he does we'll see uh, do you, the next question is, do you have a mass market paperback? Again, I have one. It is The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. I bought this actually for 99 cents at Goodwill. Um, actually, I think it was even further on sale because of the tag color. I bought it to do crafts with. I don't like mass market paperbacks. I don't like, it. they feel squished. So I don't really like them. And they're so, so tiny. I'm not old. I'm not blind. But they, the writing makes you feel like you're old because you're like... When you try to read it, it doesn't work. Da Vinci Code, um, if you haven't read it again, another book that has been out forever. It was a best-selling, super controversial at this time. Um, basically, there is a professor named Robert Langdon, and he gets brought in on a crime because someone is killed inside of the Louvre, and there's this whole puzzle-solving rigmarole that has to do with Jesus has a bloodline. And everything in this book leads to that air. The next question is, do you have any books by an author, an author using a pen name? And yeah, I do. Um, believe it or not, because apparently not everybody knew that um, it was her pen name, but all of the books by Cassandra Clare, that is a pen name. Her name is actually Judith Lewis. Pen name is Cassandra Clare. So I do have all of the Mortal Instrument books as well as the Infernal Devices books. Um, I could have my husband tell you about them. I don't know much about them right now. We are currently as a, like, together reading it out loud to each other. We're reading City of Bones, so I'm learning about them. Basically, there's people called Shadow Hunters and they fight demons. That's what I know right now. <laughs> that, that beyond the world that we know of, there are mythical creatures as vampires and werewolves and demons. All right, the next one is, do you have any books with the character's name in the title? Um, I'm going to pull out a kid's book here, but I don't care. So as a kid, everybody remembers the American Girl dolls. I mean, they're still a thing. But my favorite doll, who has been discontinued, which, rude, uh, was Samantha. And I got lucky one day that I ran across this book, and it is all of the American Girl books that have to do with Samantha in one lovely hardbound book and it has every book in it and every book has her na title her name in the title we have meet samantha samantha learns a lesson samantha surprise happy birthday samantha samantha saves the day and changes for samantha i think that fits that i mean i could have pulled out harry potter but i'm using harry potter for other things as well so for a character's name in the title we have the samantha story collection All right, so the next one is a, do you have a book with two maps in it? I have a book, I have one book that has a map in it. And it technically has it at the beginning, on the beginning cover and the back cover. But, I mean, it, it's not really two maps. It's the same map of Oz. And that's Wicked by, my, my, by Gregory Maguire. This is another retelling. Well, it's not really a retelling, it's a prequel to Wizard of Oz. It's it's how the Wicked Witch became the Wicked Witch. She wasn't always wicked. She was born green. She goes to college. She meets Galinda. They were besties in college. Kind of sort of frenemies, I guess. And things happen because she's green. People don't like her. And her magic is intense. And things happen. And, it, and she ends up being the Wicked Witch of the West. Things that happen that don't necessarily happen the way that you would think that would happen. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, a book with maps, kind of, sort of, kind of cheating. But it's actually a pretty cool map, though. It, like, even has a key of, like, the emerald mines in the forest and the farmland. Of course, the yellow brick road. Doesn't cover much. All right. Um, the next one is, do you have any books that were originally written by a celebrity? I went ahead and grabbed three because they were all right next to each other. So I'll show you all of them. I have Scrabby Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. 
she's so cute. But this is her autobiography memoir. She's just delightful. There's not much to say about these because most of all three of them. Well, no, not really. Okay, so I have Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. I have Whiskey in a Teacup by Reese Witherspoon, which is a biography as well as has a bunch of recipes in it and beautiful pictures. I mean, it, Reese Witherspoon is a beautiful woman and just the coloring, like the way that the pictures are, like her covers, like the inside covers are these really pretty. It's just a beautiful book and the recipes are very, very Southern. And then the last one I have is How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh. Lily Singh is a YouTuber turned late night TV host and this book is a basically a personal development book, a personal development book. Basically how to get out of your own head and just do the things that you want to do. But better than any other personal development. I love this book because it's it's not like other personal development books where it almost seems like you're reading a textbook. This is like you're having a conversation with Lily. And anybody who's watched her videos just knows how fun and entertaining she is. And so reading this is like having a conversation with her and it's just so much fun. So books written by people who weren't originally authors. There you go. The next one is do you have a book with a clock on the cover? Well, as I've already discussed, I have the the Infernal Device series and all of them have Big Ben or, or some sort of clock, but mostly big bins. So there's we go. This shiny clock in the middle of London. Do you have a book of poetry? I actually a couple of years ago had a friend send me all of the Shel Silverstein books. Yes, they're books written they're poetry written for children. I'm not a huge modern poetry kind of person. If I'm gonna read a book I want a book. I know it sounds really wrong, but but I do. I have a light in the attic as well as just all of the other Shel Silverstein books. So, I mean, book of poetry. Here we go. Do you have a book with an award stamp on it? This book was one of my absolute favorites as a kid, and I bought it recently so that my daughter could also read it and enjoy it, and it is Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. And here we go. Is the award stamp for the Newbery Award. I wish I had a year on it, but I don't think it does. It doesn't have the year on it. But... This one is about a little girl who just, oh it does, it says winner of the 95 Newbery Award. This is a story about a little girl telling her grandparents this crazy story about one of her friends and basically learns who she is along the way. And it's really a nice, I don't know, coming of age story. All right, so the next question I do not have a book for, and it is, do you have any books with the author has the same initials as you do? My Legally, my initials are still A-G. My married initials are A-C. I lucked out on both of them. The only book that I have that actually starts at least with an A is Frostfire by Amanda Hawking, but the last name starts with an H, so that didn't work out. So, do you have a book of short stories? I do. I don't personally have it at the current moment in time because I just lent it to my grandmother for her to read, but I do own Tales of Beetle the Bard, and that has five short stories in it. So there we go. Um, and if you don't know what Tales of Beetle the Bard is, it is a book that was written inside of the Harry Potter universe as like a textbook or a children's book inside of that story, and then J.K. Rowling decided to publish it. Yeah. There are so many books that I wish she would publish, like... I feel like Hogwarts of History or Oh, The Life and Ty Life and Lives of Albus Dumbledore by Rita Skeeter would be a fantastic book to publish. JK, get on that, please. Alright, our next book or our next question is do you have a book that has been turned into a TV series? You know I said something about mass market paperback and these are all holy crap. These are mass market paperback as well, but we bought them as a set and they are the Game of Thrones series by George R.R. R. Martin. There's really no reason to give you a synopsis of this one. You guys have heard of Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm hoping. If not, just, there's, there's nothing to help you with, guys. 
do you have a book that is between 500 and 510 pages? I didn't think I did. Every book that I picked up that I thought would be was either like 480 something or like 530 something, but I did. I found one. One. The Clockwork Prince is exactly 500 pages. The next book, is, or next question is, do you have a book that has been turned into a movie? This is the one I picked up. I do have several, but this is the one that I picked up because tangibly, like, in my hand. The other ones are on my Kindle. So I have A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. The movie took a lot of liberties, as most book or most movies do. It didn't quite happen the way that the books did. But basically, you have two characters. You have Emily and Stephanie. Stephanie is this sweet stay-at-home mom who has her, I mean, I don't know if she does in the book. I can't remember that. Yes, yeah, she does. Yeah, her blog. She has a blog, but she stays at home, and she's really a sweet person. In the movie, she's played by Anna Kendrick, and her son makes friends with this little boy at school, and then when they meet his mom, his mom's name is Emily, and in the movie is played by Blake Lively, and Blake and, or not Blake, <laughs> Stephanie and Emily could not be more different. Um, Emily is very glamorous and she has a whole lot of secrets and you can kind of tell as the story progresses she has a dark past and then one day she just disappears after telling Stephanie to pick up her son at school and so they could have a play date and then days go by and Emily never shows up and you basically her whole story unfolds I mean I enjoyed the movie quite a lot from but it's it, it does differ from the book um, Question number 19 is, do you have any graphic novels? I don't. I don't like that I don't. I really want some. There are so many that are on my TBR, but I just don't own any yet. And the final question is, do you have any books that are written by more than one author? I really didn't think I did. And then just a second ago, as I was uh, looking at a different book, I picked up The Doll People. This is another book, another book that when I was a kid, I absolutely loved. Um, but it's by Anne M. Martin and Laura Godwin. It is very Toy Story-esque in that when the kids are away, the dolls will play, and the the dolls here on the this on the front of the cover are a set of dolls that have been passed down from generation to generation, and um, one of the dolls there is an, an ant doll. There's an anti doll because right inside of the cover is like this really cool um, like looks like a catalog page, and if you see here like this little pieces. This little turnout page ends up being the ant doll, and for whatever reason in the book, she's been missing for many, many years, but like I said, they're a set of dolls that have been passed down for generation to generation, and the young girl that's in the book, like the actual human girl, obviously wants to update her, update her dolls, and she gets the fun craft set of dolls, and they are very much more like the little people kind of dolls, as, a, as opposed to like the traditional dollhouse kind of dolls, and um... The original doll people, I forget, I think they're just called the dolls, and they feel very threatened by the fun crafts because obviously the little girl wants to play with those more, but then the little girl in the dolls and then the little girls in the fun craft family, they become friends and then they together go out and look for an ant doll. And it's really cute. I, I mean, I thoroughly enjoy it. I've read it multiple times. Um, and I hope my daughter enjoys it too, so. Alright, so that's going to be it. Um, I kind of ramble on a lot for some of these. But if you did like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up as well as that big red subscribe button and go ahead and hit the notification bell as well so that you are always notified when I upload a video. So until next time, bye!